Hello and welcome! This is a video tutorial for an invisible closure on an I-cord bind-off. This is specifically for our free Espas Tricot pattern, the Flourish Bandana, but it would work anywhere you have to join an I-cord bind-off to an I-cord edge. First I'll show the buttonhole, then the I-cord bind-off and join. I have this little swatch to demonstrate. I have my right side facing and I'm about to start the buttonhole row as written in the pattern. So I'm going to knit three with my main color. And here is where I would pick up my contrasting yarn, the pom-pom yarn or any stranding yarn, but I'm showing it without just so that it's clearer for the video. I'm going to KFB, knit front and back, and then knit one. Then I'm going to bind off two. And knit to the last three stitches. And slip three with yarn in front, turn. Wrong side row, I'm going to knit three and then knit to the buttonhole gap from the previous row. Now I backwards loop cast on two stitches with both yarns if you're holding one stranding. Knit to last three stitches and slip three with yarn in front. Then repeat rows one and two of the bandana instructions, and I'm going to skip ahead here. So here I am, ready to do the I-cord bind off. Here is my buttonhole. This is a tiny little swatch, but the buttonhole will be the same size on your bandana. For the bind off row, I'm going to knit two to begin with, not three. And at this point, I'm no longer using my stranding yarn, you can cut it. I'm going to continue just with the main color yarn. So I've knit two, now I'm going to do a slip slip knit. So slip slip knit those two together and slide those three stitches back to the left hand needle. This is a standard I cord bind off. Knit two, slip slip knit. Slide those three stitches back knit two, slip, slip, knit. This is effectively carrying the I-cord from the side up and around at a right angle along the top of your stitches. I'm doing this until there are six stitches remaining. It's important to keep an I-cord bind off nice and loose. You could use a 0.5 millimeter bigger needle if you're generally a tight knitter or want to make sure. I now have six stitches left and I will just slip them onto my left hand needle just to finish them off. Now I'm going to cut the yarn with a decently long tail, at least about six inches or so, and I'm going to grab any sort of blunt tapestry needle you would usually use for weaving in ends. Now I'm going to take the first three stitches from working the bind off. So those are the three stitches at the tip of the left hand needle that I just slid back on, and place them on the right hand needle like this, making sure the needle point lines up parallel with the left hand needle. So I want them to be on the right hand needle in this orientation so that when you hold the needle tips parallel, they are sitting in front of the last three stitches, which are on the left hand back needle. I'll do that again. So the last three stitches that I worked, I'm going to slip them onto my right hand needle this way. And effectively, this means that the working yarn that I cut is attached to the third stitch on my right hand needle and these are sitting in front of the stitches on my left hand needle. So now I'm going to thread my needle and graft these together, like closing the toe of a sock. I'm going to go purlwise into the first stitch on my right hand needle, which I'm now going to call my front needle, and knitwise into the first stitch on the back needle. This is just to set it up. 
Now I'm going to continue with a regular graft, knit off for the first stitch, purl through the second stitch and leave it on. Purl wise and off on the first stitch on the back needle, knit wise and keep it on for the second. Knit wise, take it off, purl wise, leave it on. Pearl wise, take it off, knit wise, leave it on. For the last stitch, knit wise, take it off, and then I'm just going to go back through the last stitch on the back needle, pearl wise, and I'm going to weave the end through the base of this stitch, the base of the V, and hide the rest of the end in the I cord itself. This way, it basically remains as seamless as possible. You can adjust the stitches around it, and you end up with an invisible join for your I-cord bind off.